wonderful to see everyone here today and we'll make a start in our service today. Um, we've got a visitor as well at the back which is lovely, uh, first time I've ever met them but yeah. And David is at the back also, you're not the visitor but yeah. Could you uh, pray and open the service for us please? Yeah. That'd be lovely. Lord, thank you for my visit here today. <laughs> Come on in. Look, we do pray, Lord, we commit this service to you. We pray for those, Lord, who are on the way. We pray for those, Lord, who are not able to be here. Some are away on holiday, others are all working. We pray your blessing on us in everything we say and do. We pray, Lord, that you will be honoured and you will be glorified. Have your way, we pray, Lord, and be exalted. Build your church. I might get some people coming in who don't know you, Lord, and that might be spicy work. And you bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And uh, if you've got the word of God in front of you, we're going to turn to Psalm 8. And we're going to read around the assembly. Psalm 8. And just as we're finding that, Carol is okay, but she's not attending today. She's uh, just. Um, just gone home and uh, therefore is running a little bit late, so we'll keep her in prayer later, but she's absolutely fine. <coughs> and we'll pray for those that can't be here as well later. Psalm mm. 8, and we're going to start to read this nine verses, so it'd be nice if we did a verse each and bounced around. Let us read. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Verse 2. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies. In silence, the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you, you have set in place. Verse 4. That is mankind, that you are mindful of them. Human beings, that you care for them. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and granted him glory and honor. You made him to rule over the world of your hands. You have put all things under, under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the animals of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the path of the sea. Right? First line. O Lord, our Lord, come just to be your name. Amen. Praise God. And isn't it a lovely song of the bookends there? The start and the finish. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Whenever we go round and we look at the splendours that we're surrounded by, all the things that God is doing, even in the highs and the lows, to remember how majestic God is. And how majestic is his name in all the earth. The name of the Lord. We're now going to move into a time of worship as we um, celebrate, as we recognise how majestic the Lord is. Do you stand if you're able? The words are on the screen. Yeah. 
sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to bear his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and slowly dread, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. His hope is covered, melt and blood, support me in the whelming flood.
As we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. As we lift our hands in worship, as we lift your holy name, for you are great, to the miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. As we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You are the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. As we lift your holy name, you are great. You can make the world so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You can make the world so great. There is no one else like you. There is no
total surrender to you, Lord. None of me and all of you. That the world will see you in and through us. That we get out of the way and allow you to shine across your world, your hurting world. Lord, I would pray for that lady Lynn that spoke to Dawn on Monday. I thank you, Lord, that you drew her to that place for that time, for that conversation. Yeah. Lord, I pray for a, a total uh, coming back to you, to come back to the heart of worship, not to come back to a church building, not to come back to a denomination, but to come back to you and soar with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, it's a great privilege because indeed there is no one else like you. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You are our one and only Saviour. Our one and only guide, our one and only friend who died that we might be forgiven. Who died not to make us good, but to forgive our sins so that we might last go to heaven saved by your precious blood. <laughs> Lord, we thank you that over this Easter period we've been able to witness to other people. We've been able to worship corporately, but we've also been able to talk to others about you. To have conversations that are God intended. Not us, Lord, but you using us for your glory. Lord, we thank you because you work through us wherever we are. Not just in the church, but wherever we are. And we praise you, Father, for that as we walk through town, as we walk through the country, as we stand in a bus stop. Lord, help us to see you in everything. And help us to respond to your still, small voice. Help us not to be afraid, but just to listen to you, to listen to what you would want us to do every moment of every day. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you that we are able, we are able to gather once again in this place. We thank you for each other, Lord, and we are mindful of those that have been unable to gather. You know them, Lord. You know where they are. You know how they're feeling. You know them, Father, so very well, more than we could ever know anyone, because they are yours, just as we are yours. And this afternoon, Lord, we just bring them to you. Yeah. We just remember them, Lord, in name, in our minds, in our hearts. We just ask, Lord, that special touch may come upon them just now. Lord, personally, I would especially pray for Claire as she travels, Lord. Give her safe travel. May she be well, Lord, at the other end. And may she enjoy her time with family and friends over this next month. Lord, keep her in your care. May she know your arms of love around her. May her family know, Lord, that she belongs to you completely. We thank you for her, Father God. Just be with her and be especially near Sean as he stays and works and just ponders, Lord. But just keep him near the cross, Lord. Make him know that he is loved and cared for too. Not just by you, but by us who gather in your name. Lord, I thank you for the conversation that I did have, that Janice has already mentioned. And I do indeed pray for Lynn, Lord, that just now you will come to her afresh and she will know your living presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for presence here. Be with us, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the forgiveness you purchased for us, for the grace you poured out with which we would be condemned, without which we would be condemned. Lord Jesus, we don't deserve to be here. But thank you and praise you also for the resurrection. Because you demonstrated that you have defeated death. And because of that we have a sure hope of new life, a new kind of life, a permanent life with you. Lord Jesus, we praise you. And thank you. Amen. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you that that new life starts here and now. Yeah. And these bodies fade away. It will just be a continuation of life. Life in all its fullness. We just thank you that we have that here on earth now. shining beacons of hope and light in this lost and hurting world. And we surrender, surrender again and fall to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Less of us, more of Him. Facilitating us to do all that He's commanded us to do. We're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 3, verses 5 to 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9. Entitled this chapter on divisions in the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9, and I'll read. What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants. Through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants, nor he who waters, is anything, but only God, who made things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labour. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. That passage about Paul planting the seed, Apollos watering it, and God giving the increase is so important, isn't it? If you strip away each and every person, we have a part to play, yes. We're part of like a jigsaw piece, a jigsaw puzzle, piecing together God's overall plan. But essentially, God is doing work. God is there behind the scenes. God is moving on the hearts, minds and souls of individuals. 
God is sending them to that place where we can connect with them, and talk with them, and journey with them. But God is doing the work. The title of that chapter, Division in the Church, we've seen so much partnership and unity evident here today amongst a number, a myriad of uh, congregations. It's wonderful to see. None of us competing against the other, but working in unity with what God is doing and receiving all those that God would send over our paths. The vision in the church is the devil's folly. The devil is just waiting to see that division, yeah. that destruction, and that backbiting, and the fragmentation of his, uh, of the Lord's church, the Lord's bride. The devil is trying to sully and attack that at every opportunity. I visualised the reading that we've just seen as a triangle. God at the absolute top, the centre. Paul shooting off as the planter. And then Apollos as the waterer in order to make that ministry um, triangle, that partnership with God that verse 9 talks about. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. It is through the anointing and the appointing of God that we even have a part to play as the arms and legs of Christ. And what a privilege that is. Paul, as an evangelist and many other things, Paul, Apollos, watering the seed, tending it like a pastor. And that is what we should see, the nurturing, the discipling of Apollos, and the evangelism of Paul planting that seed in the lives of the individual. <laughs> now, if you bear with me for a moment, does anyone know? Does everyone know the fire triangle, yep. the fire equation? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Fuel, oxygen, heat. That's it. Right. Fuel, oxygen, and heat. In order to develop a fire, there are three requirements. It is the oxygen, the heat, and the fuel. And I think this fire triangle almost has a parallel, whereby the oxygen is absolutely critical. It's at the centre, the source of all that takes place. The fuel is like inquirers fueling that fire. The evangelism that takes place and fuels the very fire. And the heat, the nurturing and the discipling that takes place to billow and control that flame. If, when you're creating a fire, you're missing one of those three ingredients, the fire will not take place. It will not take hold. And we, if we take our eyes off the ball of that fire, the fire diminishes. I think that's a similar parallel with the church, where if one of those three ingredients, of course, if God is lacking, absolutely, but if there's no one sowing the seed, no one bringing people in and nurturing, the church contracts and almost becomes defunct because it isn't there to receive and to nurture with God at the helm and in the mix. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and 12, if you'll turn to it with me, very well known. Uh, well, a couple of verses. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 12. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ 
may be built up. Now that verse, verse 11, term, the fivefold ministry, is absolutely critical to undergird and build and establish a healthy church. There are ingredients there. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers. And although I'm teaching you to suck eggs and, um, you know, bring the earth, what is it? Sing into the choir. Um, the apostles, to remind ourselves, in a modern day context, not only go and develop and start churches, but they may start church projects, where God is in the midst of two or more, and God is centre. That is church, isn't it, essentially? Where God is being glorified. So, the modern day apostle setting up church, setting up projects in order to receive and gather individuals to Christ. That is the modern day apostle. And you may be sitting here thinking, well, where does that fit in with me? I'm going to pick on Becca. Ooh. Becca, you like your crafts, don't you? Your knitting and things like that. You could start one, couldn't you, with another Christian, and that would be an expression of church bubbling over. I don't knit as well as you. <laughs> Debbie, I'm going to pick on you. With one or other Christian saints, you love your cooking, then your baking. And actually, so does Monday. <laughs> Getting together and praying. You bless us with those cakes. A cake club could be that new expression of God establishing something and leading many to him. And boy, I think everyone's sitting here thinking if we could all make cakes as well as you two, we'd come to the group. But yeah, so I mean, even there, just an example, if people set up a running group, a working group, etc., etc., birthing God in the centre, yeah. church would erupt and develop out of it in its true sense. But church planting and church building, and people may be going away like, uh, I'll make them blush if they're watching the YouTube channel, like David and Annette that were just celebrating, weren't they, in Albania, that church plant that they were involved in, that, you know, in its core sense as well. And then the prophets, the prophets, those that hear directly from God, but speak, most importantly, the word of God over the assembly, into the lives of other people. And as we're prayerfully reflecting at home, we can be used of God in that sense, where we speak into the nation, maybe through letter writing, speak to our politicians, we speak the word of God, the truths of God, that need professing and proclaiming over this nation like never before. The prophetic ministry that also is so key in any church. Um, I was at a wonderful church, um, was, took a bit of a different direction, but under the most anointed godly man for about 25 years I was in that church. And they had someone who used to be uh, recognised as a prophet in that church. And he would speak with such conviction and clarity the word of God. And the church used to wag and pray uh, what he was speaking to the church. And the church would steer and navigate into where God was leading. This chap stood up with a very prophetic ministry and role. I've only seen it. Uh, personally in that one individual in such a strong way. But God uses each and every one of us occasionally to speak in season his word for the church and the edification of the saints. And then the evangelists, those that we've seen there in 1 Corinthians, Paul's role, uh, Paul was said to have many roles, but of course in that uh, passage in particular, those that sow, those that take and distribute the word of God. And we can do that in a myriad of ways these days. But those that 
befriend individuals. They speak Jesus into every situation. They gossip the gospel and invite people to church. It can sometimes be just that link, that invitation of the evangelist that just brings someone into the threshold of the church, into the body of believers, that that person then journeys and meets the Lord. But the initial proclamation can also, of course, be anointed of God and used so mightily that someone gives their life to Jesus Christ there and then, speaking of Jesus into the lives of many and sharing Jesus. And of course, we've said before, all of us are called to be all of these things in some way or another. But maybe, like evangelism, we're all called to evangelise, but we might not step into the office of an evangelist. We all have our ways of talking and sharing the gospel with those that we encounter. We're all called to evangelise, even if we're not there at the pulpit or at the street corner being the evangelist, as we would see typically. We can share a text, can't we? We can send an email, a phone call, and share God's word in a myriad of ways. And then, of course, the pastors. And I would argue that uh, in the passage of 1 Corinthians that we read, Apollos, with the watering, the nurturing, and the discipling, shows that ministry there. The shepherd, the person that, um, well, the pastor that leads the flock, the pastor that protects and um, comes alongside the flock, but those with a pastoral heart. And again, that should be each and every one of us, looking around us for those that need that uh, pickup, those that need us to journey with them and give them that hand. And I look around here and I, I see many with a pastoral heart. Even again, if you're not stepping into uh, the role of pastor, you are, with your pastoral heart, ministering in that office. And then, finally, the preachers and the teachers. And again, um, sometimes it's acknowledged that you preach from the pulpit, and boy, isn't that a privilege to pe preach from the pulpit? I lost my teeth then. <laughs> to preach from the pulpit and to teach in the Bible studies, and all that goes with that. You know, you sort of, in the eyes of man, sometimes you're up there, aren't you? Well, no, you're not. You're serving, and you're the least of the least. But the preachers and the teachers' role to proclaim and to profess the Word of God, <coughs> to unpack it, and again, with the small p, to be able to break down a passage with our friend, our family, our neighbour, in a coffee shop, and to preach with a small p. Sometimes it means you lower your voice, and you're not preaching to a hundred, but you're preaching to the one, and that is the one that God is moving yeah. and stirring upon. But it's that proclamation of the word, and the unpacking of the word of God, which again, all of us can and do. <laughs> on a regular basis. That is some of the ingredients of a healthy church. And like a healthy fire that we spoke about in that fire triangle, that fire equation, we should, and I pray that we do, want to see God's touch, God at the centre of that revival fire that will spread through this land, through every community we represent, into drawing men, women and children into every Bible-based church in, in and around this town. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And surrounding areas. If the overspill was so great that every church was packed, teeming with individuals, and it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah. The churches are getting less. They're closing down and converting into wine bars, mosques, 
restaurants, this, that and to that. Gurdwaras, I saw a lovely Gurdwara in an old Methodist chapel. <laughs> Broke my heart to see the conversion, but you know, I had some good friends that happened to use it. Um, some good Sikh friends. But it's these conversions where we're losing the places to receive people. But the need is getting ever greater. It's like that seesaw effect, isn't it? And we need to see God at the centre of it. Again, strip away the people, the personalities. God's church, with God at the centre, will build his church. We just have the privilege to play a part. And then, like we read in Psalm 8, our prayer and God's prayer, that the world will be able to proclaim, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Amen. We're going to move into another time of worship now as Janice comes up to lead us. And the words will be on the screen if we can stand up. So <laughs> 
Father God, we thank you because we know that you have been with us this afternoon. We thank you, Lord, from 
the bottom of our hearts because you love us and you know all about us. Lord, we thank you for your message this afternoon that there are many things that we can do in your love. Many things that maybe we need to think about, maybe we need to consider, maybe you need to show us the next step in our journey with you. Lord, we ask indeed that you will open our hearts, open our eyes and open our ears to listen and to hear your voice. Lord, may your will be done in us just as it was in your son Jesus. And so, Lord, as we go our separate ways just now, we pray indeed that you will go with us and before us, that your Holy Spirit will remain with us and with those we've promised to pray for and those we love. Be with us now until you call or we meet again. Amen. 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 Praise God. Can I, could you pass by the end? Thank you. And just to remind everyone, there is uh, the